Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to this video tutorial on Windows Phone 8 for students of King Faisal University and for others who want to learn mobile app development. This is part 16 in the series entitled Data Bound App Template for Windows Phone 8 App Development using C Sharp. The Model View View Model Pattern or MBBM is an approach to separate the data from the user interface. The data is the model and can be written using a C-Sharp class. The user interface is the view and can be written using SAML. And the link between the two, the model and the view, is called the view model, which can be written also using a C-Sharp class. For our app, we will create item view model class with properties ID, line 1, line 2, and line 3. In MBBM, this is the model. Then we will create main view model class that has a collection of item view model objects using observable collection. In MBBM, this is view model. Moreover, we will initially display line 1 and line 2 using long list selector, and when selected, we will display line 3 in another page. In MBBM, this is the view. Let's create a new project using the data bound app template. Let's call it app 16 underscore 1. To see how it works, let's run it at once in our emulator. One thing we can notice at once is that the contents during runtime are different from the contents during design time, which we can see now in the background. By scrolling, we can see that the data is up to runtime 16. Let's click one runtime selection. Notice that we move to another page with an additional detail. This works the same for the other selections. So that solves our problem. The runtime line, this one, can be our line 1, while the text below it is our line 2. And the details in the new page will be our line 3. All we have to do now is to learn the SAML and code behind of this template. In the Solution Explorer, notice the View Models folder. Inside it are two classes, Item View Model and Main View Model. Let's double click Item View Model. So this is it. We don't have to create that Item View Model because it's already included when we use a data bound app template. Notice that there is this iNotify property change. This is an interface that our item view model implements. Now let's look at our properties. There is our ID property and it already has its get and set methods. There is our line 1, our line 2, our line 3. Now this uh, property change and this method notify property change are because of the implementation of this iNotify property change. In this example, because we are going to use static text, this will have no use. This time, let's uh, double click mainViewModel.cs. It too uses the iNotify property change interface. Notice the items variable, which holds the collection of item view model using observable collection. Below, we will see this method called load data. This is where we will need to place our static data. To save the length of this video, I will pause it for a moment and I will edit uh, the contents of our properties line 1, line 2, and line 3. Voila! So this is now our new data. So please uh, try to pause also this video so you can edit your data. Looking back in our Solution Explorer, you can see that there are three SAML files, the app.saml, the details page.saml, and our main page.saml. Um, the app.saml.cs is responsible for loading the data from SAML file into instances of the data model. Let's go back to main page.saml. In mainpage.saml.cs, inside the content panel, we can see this long list selector uh, that has a name of main long list selector. And there is an item source here with the value binding items. This items is the same item in our mainviewmodel.cs. 
And that's how they are connected. Going back to our main page that Samuel, uh, the text blocks here, here, the two the two text blocks inside the item templates data template uh, binds our two fields line one and line two. Now in the main page that Samuel that CS, we can see here. Uh, a method called a main long list selector selection change that uses the navigation service to go to the details page for whatever is the selected item that was selected by the user. And lastly, in the details page that SAML, you can see that there is one text block there that is binding our line three. More, uh, the text block uh, above inside the title panel uh, has a binding for our line one. So let's run it again in our emulator. And this time you can see that it's already our courses, our subjects that you can see on screen. And if you click one, we will go to the details page with the prerequisite. Going back, the prerequisite. To continue with our application, we will add another property called line4 with this data and we will show it using the details page. So we'll start that by going to the item view model CS and we will add another property. We'll just simply copy this one, control C, control B and change it to 4. four. Or four, four, and four. Next, we have to go to our main view model that CS so we can add the data for line four. So this is line four is equal to uh, the first one is without lab. We'll just copy this, control C, and we'll include it here, control V. I think this one has a laboratory. Then the next one also has a laboratory. And the next one also has a laboratory. And the next one doesn't have a laboratory. And the last one doesn't also have a laboratory. Now we will go to the details page that summer. Uh, we will include here another text block where we will bind line 4 so we'll just make it smaller this text block and I will already use this one let's just control C and control V and we'll put it below and make it smaller so this time we will bind it to line 4 our fourth property so that's it. Let's try to run it in our emulator. If I choose electronics, there. It has a lab. If I choose OS, yeah, it has a lab. Calculus without lab. Okay, congratulations. We just finished using a data bound app template for Windows Phone 8. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Masalama.